Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday to you all. So, I have two videos that I'm going to respond to today before I go to work. And so, <laughs> anyway, um, I, know, I want to let some of you guys know, and I know a lot of you do, but if you're new to the whole Onision situation, um, all of these videos that he's doing is him repeating most of the stuff while adding some new context to it. And, one second. Um... At the same time, he's um, becoming quite unhinged um, mentally. His sense of reality is warping, and it's kind of sad in a way because he's not – he's trying to tell us his truth, which to me is sounds like total bullshit because – the way he even talked about ha uh, Shiloh having sepsis, and I read a couple of comments that said that, they, that some of you have had sepsis before, and you guys, uh, you either were in a coma or you got almost got really something really bad happened, and I feel really bad for you guys. Um, I'm sorry that had to happen, but it's it's very common. Um, sepsis is a very common thing. A lot of people do come out of it. A lot of people do survive it. And treatment for sepsis is very easy right now, um, especially even in 2011, 2012 standards. It was still pretty easy to treat it. You know, people have had sepsis has been a thing for general, you know, for dozens of years now, and they've got more ways to treat it. So either a Greg is lying, or b he doesn't do his own research, and he just mouths whatever he thinks is correct so we're gonna get through two videos today um like i said the first one is going to be called um so and the second one is going to be called um now it's he, his titles are so fucking weird and by the way this is a double dissection i'm also going to have some music playing later um, just so Greg can't try to copyright claim these videos. Because I can't stand him doing that anymore. Because I don't know why he would copyright claim his confessional thing. It makes no sense. Or confess his side of the story when he's copyright claiming. Who would do that? Unlike, you know, Greg. Alright, so let's, uh, let's get into the first one. Uh, not on his channel, definitely not. I just was there to get the video downloaded. Um, is it completely different? No. Okay, so this one's the first one. Alright, so we got this one to watch. I was trying to remember which one I downloaded first. Okay, this one is it. This one's called So. We'll see where he goes from there. The way he was talking about Shiloh yesterday, it was really fucked up. And it sounds like something from a mentally deranged person's mind, anyway. Okay, so, uh, again, the reason I hadn't spoken up before is because people in my life who I love told me not to. Um, oh, shit. Not everybody handles controversy and drama the way I have in the past. Because you're the one who knows about it. Uh, some people just want to run away and be silent because they are so sad or disappointed or heartbroken or uh, some people say that people are like hiding something with silence and so forth. Um, what? And while that assumption is like really... You're, you're making a lot of assumptions just based on what people have told you. And then you make these and formulate these assumptions just out of sheer what the fuck i mean you don't think about things objectively you don't think about things logically you've never been a logical person you're always somebody like i, I hate to say this but somebody who like the comic version of spider-man who uh doesn't think things for himself and he's influenced by other people 
sounds a lot like that. And I hate comparing him to characters that have such good morals, but he is. Uh, in some instances, fair. It doesn't universally apply, and that's why we don't speculate. Um, I think you question everything. You look for answers. You don't just go based off of what other people tell you to do. Speculation is unfair. It's kind of like if somebody spreads a rumor about you at school, saying you slept around or something like that. Uh, it's unfair for everyone just to believe it automatically without getting your side. But when you stay silent, that makes no fucking sense. About it when people ask you. People just assume guilt, and that's, it's an unfair thing that people do, like, it's basically- Stop pandering to your fucking ten-year-old audience here, and actually tell the fucking truth for once. Basically where, like, people have- See, he does this shit where he thinks he's pseudo-intellectual, and he, cle he does these weird analogies, like someone who's in school. He, all he thinks about is school age, girls who are in school. All he thinks about, that's all he fucking thinks about. Everyone he's ever dated has been school age. 17, 16, 18, you know, girls who are supposed to be in school or going to college, that's who he's been, that's who he's dated in his life. It's not about who he's kicked out, it's about what he's done and who he's been with. That's the reason Chris Hansen is after you, idiot. I have to talk about just unpleasant moments in their life, otherwise you make their unpleasant moments last forever. Okay, I'm going to have to show you guys something. When I was in school, okay... When I was in middle school, that was the last time I was actually ever in school. I never went to high school. When I was in middle school, a lot of people assumed that my dad – well, a lot of people knew my, knew my family because my dad went to school, the same school as I did. Well, my dad was a troublemaker in his days, and they immediately automatically assumed that I would be. I mean, I kind of was, but at least I did it in a way that it wasn't bad, so to speak. I had my little, you know, small group of friends. I had about three or four friends. That was really cool. I didn't talk to a lot of people, but this group of mine was really cool. We were, we were basically, uh, not to toot my own horn here, but we called our, we called ourselves the Horsemen, and um, there was four of us, and one of my friends ends up betraying me and telling the principal that I was going to shoot up the school. And it was a really tough time, and they sent a cop to my house, and they searched the my aunt's house. There was no gun anywhere. And they still called me into the office the next Monday morning, and my dad got fed up with it, and he pulled me out of school. I didn't get to finish middle school. Um, it was eighth grade, and... It was one of the worst times of my life because one of my best friends decided to lie and say something horrible that I didn't do. I was going to do, apparently. So that re <clears throat> that reputation uh, preceded me for years to come. And so by the time I was 21, 22 years old, after I got out of Job Corps, I was living with my grandmother and... Um, right down the street from the school and i was talking to a friend of mine who still lived around there and he said yeah man they people still talk about you to this day i'm like wow that's crazy um <laughs> and it's something that i would never have done it's something i would never have done even now i would never have done that and it's fucked up that greggy here doesn't understand reality the way he d that other people do he thinks that he doesn't li he doesn't live I don't live day to day thinking oh could I go back in school and change things if I could you know sure but he doesn't think the way that a normal person would he thinks like an unhinged psychopath and that's what's kind of crazy about like talking about you know cuz I'd like to finish up the the Shiloh section of these videos it's crazy that like, you could have broken up with someone seven times. Like, you're dragging your hair, your fingers through your hair, you're scratching your neck, you're shifting your eyes back and forth, you're lying, dude. Stop lying. I don't think you, I think you are physically unable to stop lying. Maybe more, it's probably seven. Uh, I think, like, that was 2011, right? 
and it's 2020 now. Like, imagine dragging it on that long where you're actually like going on shows and talking to people about stuff that was well documented back then and already concluded. They're talking about it because that is exactly what they need to do. Um, Shil because of what you've done and you met her when she was like 16 or 17 years old. That is exactly what they're coming after you for. I never had to call the police on me because there was never like she was. Uh, she would accuse me of things and I would call the police just to have a professional review it and establish what was actually happening. Um, the second time when she was hauled off by the police, it was just another situation where I was scared. Because you're a fucking pussy. And we'll get into that later. That when she came back, something would happen. Like she would... Like the time that she body slammed my door when I was, I was like literally pressed against the door like this and she just kept slamming in it, slamming it, slamming in it. This is... Yeah, right. The person who you're sitting there and you're like, you're afraid that if you don't sleep and I would literally... Whenever these things go down with people uh, where they would act erratic and there's only two people that I can think of whoever I felt this way about. But when you break up with them or you say that you don't want to be their friend anymore or whatever your relationship is, you find yourself sleeping against a door just like this, having your body pressed against the door because you're afraid that while you sleep, they're going to come in there and try to kill you. And you feel this way because you live with them and you understand what it's like to feel like someone is so... No, 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 Greg. Stop trying to pull on people's heartstrings here. You know, you're doing this to try to uh, get some kind of sympathy from your fucking idiotic teenage fans that are idiotic, by the way, 14, 15 years old. You know, they are pretty stupid. Um, they'll believe just about anything people say. And it's kind of sad that you're saying this like this in a way that they would believe it. It's fucked up. So mentally unstable that they would rather you die than dump them. They would rather you die than break their heart. Shut up. Um, and I know some of you have gone through this too, but I wasn't the only- See, exactly. This is exactly what I was talking about. He said, oh, well, people have been through this too, then it's something that sounds believable. Greg, shut up. You're rubbing your neck again. That's a tell of a lie. ...person who saw the way things were uh, with their own eyes. My mom saw it. My aunt saw it. Uh... And uh, the producer of this person saw it as well. His name is Damon. And I, I asked Damon at one point, I said, I, I, I kind of feel bad for Shiloh because I feel like she has this mental condition and she, she can't. So, so your first initial thing when someone has a mental condition is to be afraid? Like, oh, they have a mental problem. They're going to hurt me. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, why do you do that? Why are you so afraid of mental disorders? Is it because you have one yourself and you don't want anybody else to have one around you? You d you don't want to get them treated. You don't want to ha make them have medication because you think, oh, well, you're just fine the way you are. Like, that's... That... You're a fucking dick, dude. Why don't you talk about the fact that you forced her to stop taking medication or mind-altering drugs, like you so call them? You know, overcome it. Uh, I feel like she's she's a victim of her her whether it's BPD or it's bipolar or it's schizophrenia. Stop talking about but you said BPD and then bipolar. BPD is bipolar disorder, dumbass. Shut the fuck up. For any, I don't know what she has. Um, because you don't for sure. Checked. But the fact that she would you don't know what she has for sure. Shut the fuck up. Fake seizures. The fact that she would fake memory loss. The fact that. She would, uh... She didn't fake any of it, dick. You don't have proof, so... You're just talking out of your ass at this point. As always. Pretend to pass out in front of the fire department. We have ten... We have, like, seven more minutes of this shit. Department, the fact that she... And we have another video to go through. She would threaten... You are mentally fucking taxing. So I gotta rewind this shit for a second. Fake memory loss, the fact that... She would uh, pretend to pass out in front of the fire department. The fact that she would threaten to end her own life and make it look like I did it, according to her words. Um, the fact that she would, you know, then admit to the police, you know, that she had threatened to end her own life. Um, and then be taken away by them. All these things 
uh, as well as all the lies and everything, and her, her last boyfriend saying the same thing, where he was actually thrown in jail because of her. Um, this concludes to a, a serious mental problem, including Aliana, the split personality. Um, but Damon said that he thought that she was just evil. And I disagreed with that. I didn't, I didn't think that she was evil. I loved her, and I didn't want to think that she was evil. I just felt really scared for her and bad. Um, because, you know, you're talking about somebody that... If you really did feel bad for her and you did feel scared for her, then you would have gotten the medication and stuff for her to get better and to get happier. You're an asshole for letting her, for refusing her to have medication, but you're not going to talk about that. You thought was the one, someone who convinced you that you were meant to be on a supernatural level, like a, your soul's bound forever by some unknown universal forces. Like, that's the kind of stuff that she would express to me. And so I felt, I felt so in love or infatuated. But then she would do things like illegal drugs, God, every time you come up with the word illegal drugs, it makes me want to fucking jack slap you in the face. Marijuana has been legal in your state since 2012, so shut your fucking yap. Um, she would she would admit to doing illegal drugs or desire doing illegal drugs. I think it was the second. Because um, I, I don't remember her ever doing illegal drugs around me. I don't remember her ever uh, doing illegal drugs and then me finding out about it. All I remember is uh, seeing a, I think it was a Skype um, message history, uh, just open up on her computer. I think she was sitting right in front of it when I saw it. And she was, she, I think she tried to close her laptop or something before I could see it, but I saw it anyway. And was talking about how much she wished that she could do illegal drugs with this person. And how, how she was so excited. If you were, she wanted to smoke weed around you. But you know what? Smoking weed is not an illegal drug, dipshit. Decided to go back and do illegal drugs with them, and um, that, that's just when you when you have for some reason there's this consistency in my history where there's people who do illegal drugs and they lie a lot, and I, I I'm fine if you do legal drugs like marijuana is legal in my state right now. Oh, now you know that it's legal. And so if you do it, fine, I don't care. But when it's illegal, you put everyone in the household at risk. You, you, you criminalize everyone. Bullshit. And I just didn't want that around me. I didn't want that in my life. Um, if it's legal, it's not a problem. It's not illegal then. So get real. Get real. I'm a former cop. Some of you guys... No, you're not. You guys don't know that, but I used to uh, be an Air Force cop. Um, Air Force military police is not a cop. It's not a cop. Stop thinking you're in law enforcement. Military police is completely different than a cop, and you couldn't even hack that. Until I uh, was diagnosed with depression. Depression. And I bet you didn't take any medication for that. Major depression. Um, you faked getting out. Anyway, but uh, as far as Shiloh goes... She went on uh, a, a live stream and she said horrible things about me. I'm not sure what she said because I didn't watch it. Um, you know I would like said. to rebuke or whatever the word is for that, uh, what she said, but I just can't bring myself to watch. There's two words. There's refute and rebuttal. You're saying these words at the same time. You're a fucking idiot. Watch an ex of 10 years ago or nine years ago trash me. Like, I don't know anyone who would want to watch an ex trashing them, so I haven't seen it. But I'm sure she said horrible things. Um, I think she she said, someone told me this, that she said that I allegedly would self-gratify to the sound of her crying, which is the most absurd thing I think I've ever heard in my life. Um, it sounds like something you would do. Um, I don't know of anyone else who would ever say that. It just is one of the most bizarre things to say. Uh, like you're saying a lot of bizarre shit right now? But, but obviously I didn't do that. I, Whatever. I don't know why a person would do that. I don't know where she got that idea. By the way, if you think that I'm not listening to him objectively, it's because a lot of the stuff that he says is a lot of bullshit. And his lying is out of this world phenomenally stupid. From I don't know what inspired that. Um, but that's an example of, you know, people who... Some people... Have you ever had that experience with someone where you oh, you hear them making up a fake story? And instead of arguing with their fake story, 
instead of saying that they're lying or anything, you go, and then what happened? And then what happened? And then what happened? And you notice that their story gets more and more outlandish and weird. I've encountered a lot of people like that. I've encountered you right now, and you're the one who's making more outlandish and more weird statements. Um, I think that in itself is some kind of sign of a disorder. Uh, I don't know why. You're, you think everything is a sign of a disorder because you can't comprehend reality yourself. But I'm not an expert in mental disorders. I do know, however, when someone's physically wrapping themselves around you and yelling in your face for you to attack them, that there's something. Didn't you say before that she whispered it, and now you're saying that she yelled it? That's a lie. Thing wrong. Um, In the last video, you said that she whispered it to your ear. Now you're saying she yelled it? You can't even keep your fucking lies straight. And we're watching this as he comes unhinged and straight up lie and watching him as he's mo making shit up as he goes along. And he's... We know he's got this mental disorder as he tries to claim it because everything he says is outlandish. And I'm thankful that uh, I never got the police called on me uh, because I'm thankful that I'm not that type of person who would be in a relationship and have that other person feel in danger. Um, I the other, you are a danger to everyone around you, dick. I felt in danger of her. I don't think she ever felt in danger of me because I was the type of person to giggle and nervous breakdown. Um, Whatever instead of physically lash out. Um, I've actually made videos in the past specifically about that and how we shouldn't do that as people. Um, but she went on a show and she said a lot of horrible things about me and then I guess she did a, a Kickstarter or something uh, based on what I was told where she was trying to get the word Gregory removed from her neck. Uh, I never told her to get Gregory on her neck. Um, yeah, you did. You told her that you would get tattoos of each other's names on each other. She went and got a tattoo of her name on for, on her, and you were supposed to get one of your name on of her name on you, but you put remember love on your wrists because you're a fucking idiot. And she went and got the tattoo removed. That did happen. She told me to get these, but she she didn't tell you to get those, idiot. You went and got them yourself, fucking poser. Yeah, I guess it was like some grand sign of love or something. She said she went to a tattoo artist and. It was your idea, not hers. Toronto, and the tattoo artist wasn't going to do it unless it was uh, someone in her family, so she said that Gregory was her grandpa's name. Uh, Bullshit. Tattoo artists do it all the time. Um, so she got the tattoo on You don't understand. You don't even understand how tattoo artists work. Tattoo artists won't tell you that. If you want something, they'll do it. It doesn't matter if it's someone's name. God damn it. You're a fucking moron back her neck she came back she showed it to me another fucking lie i looked at it and i felt really nervous and really kind of panicky because i felt like it's a really bad idea to get someone's tattoo on your body um but she seemed happy about it and it was already too late so i just kind of played along and i was like okay you got a tattoo um and of course you know our relationship didn't work out <clears throat> um so that was a, a bummer and then she i guess I was told that she got it covered up, but then had everyone else pay for it for her. Maybe post and post. They did it because they didn't want... Oh my god. You don't understand do things, do you? Jesus Christ. Payment post. Um, but that's just what I was told, so I, I can't confirm that. Uh, the irony is, is my name is James, so giving it covered up. Not back then it wasn't. It's James now because you're a fucking pussy and hiding from the IRS and the uh, government. But you know what? They keep a lock on your name, asshole, whenever you change it. Because your social security number doesn't change. Your birth name was James, and when you were dating Shiloh at the time, your name was Gregory, so fuck off. Up is kind of pointless anyway. But apparently she got in an argument with someone named Madison um, about what the point of all they're doing is. It seemed like they were just trying to hurt me. And, and their uh, live streams, and uh, Shiloh allegedly, apparently, and this is what I was told, got upset and abandoned the cause. Uh, she might come back. My guess is she will. She didn't abandon this cause. Um, but she, I guess, just left because she was so upset that Madison had started beef with her. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I guess Shiloh's out of the picture for now. Um, which, you know, she was, last time I checked, the person who got the most views on the live streams. 
Um, I have seen the screenshot of the page. I have not seen the videos themselves. Anyway, next video, let's move on to um, Billy. We'll talk about Billy. Oh, here we go. All right, so that was that. He was lying about half of this fucking video. And the other stuff of it was mostly his delusions of grandeur acting up. And him basically uh, making stupid analogies that would sound good to his chil his young audience. Damn it. We have one more video to watch, and that this one is called Now. So let's go through this dissection. And then at the end of this, I'm going to play some music so Gregory cannot um, copyright claim this. I'd rather have UMG copyright claim it than Gregory. That's saying something. So we got 13 minutes of him talking about Billy, and we will keep going. So there's this person named Billy. Uh, Billy is this beautiful woman. Uh, she she had blue hair when we first met. Um, my spouse uh, was exploring uh, his own gender interest and, and sexuality and so forth. Uh, my spouse is a trans guy, so husband. Um, but at the time, he identified as a girl because he hadn't girl. <laughs> he hadn't um, really explored himself too much, and as he transitioned. I started to, um, or as he expressed himself, I started to, you know, encourage this uh, this self exploration. Um, something that we both wanted to explore was polyamory because I worked so much that I felt like my spouse could use a significant other who was there for him. But I, yeah, right. Didn't I didn't really have anything in mind. Uh, so he met this. Um, I think 19 year olds and they kind of hit it off because I think Billy complimented him or something like that. I just... No, 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 no. Go back before. Say their proper ages, okay? That she was 17. Say their proper ages. Didn't really get into details. Don't say their ages that are now. Say their ages that they had started talking because that is the what that's going on. Or anything like that, like. Kai has his own phone, I have my own phone. We just, we don't really look into each other that much. Um, I know Kai has reviewed a lot of my stuff on my phone. Uh, like when I'd have conversations with people, I just show Kai and Kai, Kai would know. But um, that died off after a while because Kai learned that he could, you know, generally trust me. But unfortunately with Billy, what happened is it's something that, uh, called Cuddlegate. Um, Billy came over and we uh, were in a situation where first Billy would kiss Kai on camera for, as part of a sketch. It was cute, it was great. They would take selfies and, and kiss and so forth. It was a very, it felt wonderful. It of was a wonderful it experience, you know, initially, because it just felt right. Everything felt right to me. Like, I just felt like this is the way I want my life to be. Because it was living out a fantasy that you wanted to create. Um, there was this moment we were going down to the water and Billy and Kai were hanging out and they just looked so wonderful together and I was just so happy to be there and be part of that and um, you know then there would be some jealousy issues where uh, my husband would get jealous of Billy and I um, maybe talking too much or interacting too much or whatever um, but because you try to force yourself into their re into their relationship that you concocted for yourself this weird little fucking fantasy land that you want to have all these women come to your house to try to be with Kai, and it then you force yourself onto this relationship. That's exactly how you've been, and that's how you are. We. And by the way, if you think I'm not looking at him objectively and thinking about this, because he says all these all this bullshit and is lying, his fucking lying is what I can't stand. The what, what he's doing, his body language, how he's moving, how he's talking, all of it sounds a lot like bullshit. And if you can't sense bullshit coming from him, then there's something wrong with you as well. He eased into a situation where we were uh, all kissing, and um, uh, at some point I was hanging out too much with Billy, and so my husband got mad, and I think... Uh, then why did you? Why did you start hanging out with Billy too much? Were you trying to force yourself onto Billy? I think you were. 
uh, we had a fought or something like that about Billy and he left the house for a little bit. When he left, Billy was still there and so Billy and I decided to watch a movie together. Um, I think it was that movie about the drums where the guy's like really good at drumming but uh, he's kind of abused in how he drums, like the person in charge of him pushes him too far. Um, anyway, I think we watched that and I asked Billy if she wanted a massage and I got a massage by my mom a long time ago who was a massage therapist at the time and it was a no shirt and just my underwear. So that's what I uh, asked her if she wanted. She said, uh, yeah, and she was all about it. Um, but when I went to take off her bra, she said, just so you know, I'm kind of flat chested. And I was like, I don't care. Um, I really don't care. Why would I care? You know, like, your chest size doesn't matter. Uh, but I took her shirt off or, and, and her bra off. Um, or maybe she did. One of us did it. Uh, <laughs> and then she uh, laid down and I, I rubbed her back. I rubbed her whole body. I didn't actually pay attention to the m middle area a lot, you know, where the towel would generally go over if you weren't wearing underwear, but she was, um, just because I didn't want to make her uncomfortable. Um, and I, I, it was just a massage. Like, for some reason, something in my mind clicked to where I was like, okay, I'm a professional masseuse. I'm going to do this professionally. And I handled everything in what I felt was a professional way, and I felt comfortable with her, and it felt like just a really nice experience massaging someone's entire body because as I understood she hadn't had someone do that for her before and I was happy to do that. You don't, if it's the first time you do that with somebody, you don't have to have their fucking shirts off. That was a physical thing you wanted them to do. I can massage people and I don't need them to have their shirts off. Jesus Christ. Just because your mom did it to you, that means you could do it to other people. What kind of confessional bullshit is this? What kind of what kind of Oedipus complex are you trying to put out here? So um, that was that was cool for me, and then <clears throat> I, I think she went and showered off, um, and came back, and I think we just cuddled and laid together. Um, I think I heard something about uh, people grinding, uh, coming out to the public eye. Like I heard, you know, Onision grinded on me or whatever, and. Um, I have no, like, real comment on that because... It, it's about a different situation, not the Billy situation, dipshit. It may have happened. Like, there may have been, like, when we were cuddling together, there may have been grinding or something. Um, but I remember she was on top of me, and I was laying down, and she had her legs spread over me, and we were just, like, laying and hugging, you know? So, like, if there was contact there of rubbing or something with her clothes on, that that's a possibility. Um, I don't remember clearly. Um, but uh, I, I told my significant other who had left because of the jealousy issues, um, just the house for a little while, I told my significant other uh, that I had uh, given her a full body massage and that um, I think I told my spouse as well that we had cuddled. And uh, if I misgendered my husband at any point in this, I'm so sorry. I'm not sure if I just did it. I, I fear that I might. So I just like, I want to put that out there. Sometimes it happens. I don't mean to misgender him. It's, it's a weird thing of it's being trained uh, your whole life a certain way. And so you have to like overcome it. Okay. So I don't want to upset anybody, but I told my husband that uh, we had done what we did and my husband freaked out and basically said we were done. Uh, did not like me cuddling with her. Did not like me. Because it was not a relationship that you forced yourself into. It was supposed to be with her and the other person. So get yourself real. Massaging her, um, even though, as I recall, we were all kissing um, not too long prior, it was the exclusivity that my husband was uncomfortable with. And so immediately, not immediately, that's an exaggeration, but shortly after that, I asked Billy uh, if Billy would kiss me. And this is a bad thing. This is a messed up. I shouldn't have asked that. It was weird that I asked that. I had just been dumped by my husband. Uh, God, every time you say the word dumped, I want to fucking punch you in the jaw. Uh, I'm embarrassed by that. It's bad that I did that. I, I can't emphasize enough how weird that is because let me put it in perspective of how horrible that was for me to do. Someone that you're supposed to love just said that the relationship is over. Uh, this person... Don't make another analogy. Person you perceive. Every time he makes an analogy, it really hurts his credibility. 
believe is beautiful comes into your life is very new and you say uh, will you kiss me not too long after your husband says that they don't want to be with you if you're gonna be cuddling with them you're already like I wasn't a sad I was in a sad state but the fact that I was thinking about kissing was ridiculous you do realize that everything you say right now is going to be used against you, right? Everything you say in a court of law will be used against you. All of these sound like confessionals. So everything you're saying right now sounds like horseshit. And it sounds exactly like someone that is trying to confess before they do something crazy. And that was silly that I was in this bed. By the way, this, she was 17 at the time when they met. ...with this, this woman and thinking about that, but Billy actually did something really honorable in that moment, and she said that it felt weird uh, or something like that. She's like, I don't know if I, I want to go there just yet. And I was like, wow, I actually really respect that. And I actually thanked Whatever. her later on for saying that she wasn't ready for that um, because it felt very, very... Um, it felt right when she said that. Like, I think that was part of the, the, the physical, you know, lustful side, asking to kiss. And then there was the, the voice of reason, which was Billy in that moment. And she declined. And uh, we just fell asleep in each other's arms. Um, and we were having a good time the next day. But then I think Kai was like, uh, uh, you know, coming back, trying to reason with me to wake his husband up and say, hey, you dummy, you're being dumb, what are you doing? And eventually, Kai got through to me. And so I said, uh, Billy, you know what, y you can't be here anymore. Um, uh, we have to work out our marriage. Um, and then Billy... People you've kicked out of your life. ...did go home, and I think that's when uh, she did a live stream of Social Repose and Iola, where she was apparently giggling about how she didn't destroy a marriage, she just bruised it a little. Um, I'm not too hurt by that. I think, I think other people were very hurt by that. Uh, but Kai and I worked <clears throat> things out, and... Of course, you will never claim that you're not, uh, hurt by anything, because you don't want to seem to... You don't want to be imperfect to your little group of fangirls. That's your problem. Um, I apologize profusely, and I made a whole video about, well, I'm a moron or whatever, and Kai made a video about how... I'm an a-hole for that, and I agreed that I was an a-hole for that, and that was a bad thing for me to do. Um, Billy came back. Uh, we took her back later on. Uh, we tried a relationship with her again, and, you know, it was good when it was good, and uh, there were moments when uh, Billy would fight with my significant other over more jealousy issues. We did a lot of things that were um, pleasant memories for me, uh, romantically and so forth, um, to share way too much information. I... Uh, I asked, they, they had this thing with dog collars and, and dog leashes and so forth and, and intimacy. Um, those were, you know, things that they, they like my, my husband is, loves that um, from me, about me and all that stuff. But, you know, other people will probably say that's something they, uh, I don't know. It's if you hate someone and you were um, in a situation where you, uh, you get on your knees and you um, are on a leash and it's it's BDSM, what can I say? Uh, it's it's what some people are into and... Um... Yes, some people are into it, which is completely fine. I'm not here to uh, try to kink shame anybody, but the way that you were kink shaming her later on, which you're probably not going to talk about, is completely ridiculous and that's why I, as a dom, hate you. It's sad that that turns into something that's like, you know, when everyone's consenting and everyone's happy and, and in a situation, it's sad that, you know, anyone would be, um, look back on that not fondly. So I hope a person would look back on that fondly uh, because we did have good, a really good time uh, numerous times. But um, yeah, so we, we did some kinky things um, with this person and they... <sighs> We talked about, you know, how much they enjoyed it, and, and we would make out all the time. But we later on found out that she, Billy, wasn't supposed to be making out with me as much as she was. Um, Billy once did this, and, and I kind of like sharing the story, because it's kind of, it, it kind of tells you, you know, how Billy was. Um, I was in my Model X Tesla, which I had to get rid of later on due to numerous issues that I had. You still have a Tesla. 
Um, but I was in my Model X and Billy decided to come over to my driver's side and hop on my lap, but first she put on a song about dating older guys. And uh, the song, some of you might know it, but it was a really hip song, it was a really cool song. It was playing um, uh, just a really hip hop beat and it was talking about how it's cool that uh, she's into older guys. And so Billy and I were making out heavily to this and I was so into her and I wanted to, you know, I wanted to do everything with Billy. Um, but we, we were only allowed to do stuff according to my husband as a group. We were never allowed to do stuff independently um, at that time. Later on things changed, but at that time it was just the two of us. So Billy would settle for grinding on me again um, when I'm sitting in uh, the Model X um, or other places and making out with me. Sounds like a really weird flex, but okay. And it was, it was an, all those memories are great to me um, because this person was so into me and I she would just sometimes look at me and I didn't know what she was looking at because I felt ugly but she would just look at me like I was amazing and <sighs> surveillance um, I would just feel so special around her because she made me feel like I was handsome and she made me feel like I was beautiful to her dude you are making me fucking sick listening to you and by the way, if you think I don't listen to him objectively, it's because, like I said, everything that he says is total narcissistic bullshit. So, like I said, we would make out all the time. Sometimes we would uh, go into my green screen room, and she would come in, close the door, and then hop on me and make out. And I communicated to my husband that this was something that we were okay to do. We just couldn't sleep together, right? We couldn't... Um, do go all the way together when my husband wasn't around and also to be clear I made out with my husband too so it's not like you know I was trying to anything like that um, but uh, something you guys should know before I conclude this video is that um, when I told Billy that I was gonna go with my husband and that I was gonna try to work things out Billy was like via text wait don't you know like not those exact words, but was indicating that she wanted to be with me. Like, wait, don't? Like, and then you say that, oh god, I hate when you fucking lie, dude. Um, she wanted to work things out with me and, and have a relationship. And while I appreciate that to an extent, I was too broken up about my actual family. Um, and I wanted to prioritize my family. So, instead of going... Yeah, right. Going with Billy, I went with Kai in that moment. And... Even though I had screwed up, Kai gave me a second chance. And I was very grateful for Kai for doing that. Um, but you're going to find out why the making out thing was a huge problem in the next video. So, see you then. Man, these confessions are crazy. By the way, I'm going to play one of my favorite Eminem songs so that Onision doesn't try to uh, copyright claim the video.
Later, everybody. <laughs>